Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video covering the selection of body armor available in the game. There are a lot of choices, and armor can have a major impact on your effectiveness during a raid, both in terms of the protection it offers and the effect it has on your mobility. Armor in Tarkov can decrease your movement speed, turning speed, and weapon ergonomics, so it's important to think about that when selecting a vest. In this video, I'll be giving a quick breakdown of each piece of body armor in the game, and suggesting what I believe are the top contenders in each class. I won't be going into the nitty gritty details of penetration calculations in Tarkov, but I will give an overview of what you can expect each class of armor to protect you from. This video comes near the end of patch 11.7, and I plan on updating the video during point 1.2 if anything significantly changes. Level 2 body armor is the most basic protection in the game, and it's also the first armor you'll have easy access to at level 1. Essentially, this class of armor will only protect you from shotgun shells and the weakest pistol rounds, which makes it better than nothing, but certainly not ideal for PvP. In general, this class of armor should only be used if you're on a strict budget or you have access to nothing else. The one nice thing about this class of armor is that it has almost no effect on your mobility. I'm not going to go into details on the differences between the two vests in this class, as they're almost identical in terms of stats. Stats. All you really need to know is this class of armor is not very good. Level 3 body armor is the first class that will protect you from more than shotguns and pistols, but that being said, it's still only effective at stopping low tier rifle ammo, such as the 5.45 PRS and PS or the 5.56 M855. This class of armor is generally pretty effective in PvE as long as you don't get caught off guard by a Mosin or a Vepper Hunter scav, and it has mixed results in PvP depending on who you encounter. This armor is generally cheap, it's pretty easy to find and commonly returned through insurance, so you'll see a lot of it out there in Tarkov. The UN armor is available from level 2 Peacekeeper for 425 USD. It protects your chest and stomach, has a decent repair rate, and it's very common on scavs. It's one of the first level 3 armors you can buy from traders, but the movement speed penalty of 18% is actually among the highest penalties of all the armor vests in the game. It's required for several quests, but there are definitely better alternatives for general use. The Karasa armor is available from level 2 Ragman for a ridiculous trade of 3 coffee, 3 tarcola, and 3 energy drinks, or at level 3 Ragman for 63,000 rubles. The Karasa has the highest durability of the level 3 armors, good mobility stats, and a pretty decent 8% reduction to movement speed. It protects both the chest and stomach, and the two downsides to this armor are its poor repair rate and somewhat high price tag for a level 3 vest. It's a good armor to use, but it's not the most cost effective to buy. The Zook 3 press armor is not sold by any traders, but it's commonly found on scavs or on the flea market for about 30,000 rubles. The press armor's biggest advantage is a dirt cheap repair cost and extremely high repair rate, losing less than one point of durability on almost all repairs. It protects the chest and stomach and comes with a 10% movement speed penalty. The 6B23-1 armor is available from Ragman level 2 for 44,000 rubles. It protects the chest and stomach with an 11% movement speed penalty and 9% ergonomics penalty. This armor has a good price, a high repair rate, and good durability, but poor mobility stats and an annoying 4x3 stash size. Because of this, however, it rarely gets looted, making it a reliable insurance return. My top picks for the level 3 armor go to the Karasa and the 6B23. The Karasa has the highest mobility, which should be your priority when running light armor, and the 6B23 is just very cost effective to buy and repair through multiple raids. Level 4 body armor is the first class of armor that starts to offer protection from more dangerous rounds. These vests stop almost all low tier rifle ammo and offer some protection from one or two rounds of basic AP ammo, such as the 5.45 BP and the 5.56 M856A1. Level 4 armor won't save you from top tier ammo or mag dumps from assault rifles, but this is personally my most used class of body armor as it offers a good balance of high mobility and solid protection at a nice price point. The 6B13 Assault Armor is available at level 3 Ragman for 67,000 rubles and comes in two camo options. It protects the chest and stomach, has kind of low durability at 47 points, and an extremely poor repair rate. It has a high movement speed penalty at 12%, but only reduces turning speed by 3% and ergonomics by 5%, which is pretty decent. At 67,000 rubles, it's fairly cheap for a level 4 armor, and it's not a bad purchase, but it's not worth using after the first time it needs repair. The 6B23-2 armor is sold by level 3 Ragman for 84,000 rubles. It's essentially identical to the 6B13, except for slightly higher durability and a 9% ergonomics penalty. It protects the chest and stomach, but in my opinion is outshined by the cost effectiveness of the 6B13. 
The Gazelle K armor is available at Ragman level 3 for 88,000 rubles or a trade of 1 coffee and 1 gold chain. The Gazelle has the highest durability in its class at 75 and great mobility stats with a 10% movement penalty, 3% for turning speed, and 4% for ergonomics. While it has a low repair rate and high cost, the barter trade for the Gazelle is a great way to get a hold of a nice piece of armor. The Highcom Trooper armor is not sold by any traders, but it's a very common drop from scab raiders in the labs. It's an oddity because it's the only dedicated body armor in the game, aside from armored rigs, that does not protect the stomach. It has a good durability at 70 points, and both the highest repair and mobility stats of all level 4 armors, but despite these advantages, the fact that it doesn't protect the stomach is a huge drawback. Of the level 4 armors, my top pick is easily the Gazelle as the best in class. It has nice mobility stats, high durability, and one of the best barter trades in the game in my opinion. If you get your hands on either a coffee or a gold chain, buy the other one on the flea market and make the trade for the Gazelle. You'll have a level 4 armor for about 30,000 rubles. Alternatively, the 6B13 is among the most cost effective to buy straight up from the traders. Level 5 body armor is where things start to get tanky, offering protection from multiple rounds or even multiple magazines of low tier ammo. Basic rifle rounds, low tier armor piercing rounds, and pistol rounds will barely even scratch you through these vests, making them really effective against scavs and against any player who's not specifically geared to take out armor. However, most rounds fired by snipers and some of the high tier AP ammo like the M995 and BS rounds will still penetrate on the first or second shot. The Gen 4 Armor High Mobility Kit is available at Ragman Level 3 for 150,000 rubles and can be looted from Scav Raiders or the Kiba Store. It protects the chest and stomach, and while it has the lowest movement speed penalty of the Gen 4 series at 11%, it actually has a significant turning speed reduction of 15% and ergonomics penalty of 11%, which sort of contradict its name as the High Mobility variant, and I kind of hope that gets changed at some point. The Gen 4 Armor Assault Kit is available from level 3 Ragman for 195,000 rubles and can be dropped from Scav Raiders. It protects both the arms, the chest, and the stomach, which can provide a significant advantage during gunfights when your legs are behind cover and your entire exposed area is armored. The Assault Kit has a 17% movement reduction, but a pretty respectable 9% turning speed and 8% ergonomics penalty. Out of all the full protection vests, this provides the highest mobility. The Gen 4 Armor Full Protection Kit can be acquired from level 4 Ragman for 2 Lion Statues or 4 Clock Statues, making it somewhat awkward to get a hold of. On top of this, it doesn't cover any additional area over the Assault Kit and it comes with a 33% movement speed reduction. In my opinion, if you loot this, just sell it on the flea market and buy 2 Assault Kits. Oddly enough, this vest actually has a lower turning speed penalty than the Gen 4 High Mobility Kit, which I would love to see the developers change because it just doesn't make sense. The Reddit M armor is available at Ragman level 3 for 113,000 rubles. It protects the chest and stomach with level 5 armor, and it has an average mobility penalty of 12% across the board. The durability and repair rate is lower than a Gen 4, but its selling point is that it's the cheapest level 5 vest by about 40,000 rubles. The Reddit T5 armor is sold by level 4 Ragman for 200,000 rubles. It covers both arms and the chest and stomach, but it comes with a massive movement speed penalty of 37%, with 15% to turning and 14% to ergonomics. This armor has the highest durability of any vest in the game at 95 points, and it's significantly cheaper than a full Gen 4, but has similar stats. The 6B13M armor is a custom-made vest worn by the Interchange Scav boss Killa. It protects the chest and stomach, has one of the best repair rates in the game, and some of the best mobility stats out of all of the vests. There isn't much to say except that this vest is straight up better than the Gen 4 mobility kit and the Reddit M, so learn how to farm Killa for this thing. My top picks of the level 5 vest are the 6B13 Killa variant and the Gen 4 Assault Kit, because they pretty much outperform the other vests in the category. If mobility is important to you, the Killa vest is definitely among the best in the game, and if you want to be tanky but not be a full turtle, the Gen 4 Assault is one of the best full protection options. However, any of these vests are a solid choice if you take the right one to the right place. Just don't be waddling through a field on shoreline with a full protection reddit vest. Level 6 armor is the strongest class in Escape from Tarkov, and will stop at least 1-2 to two shots from almost every round in the game, except for the few rare exceptions such as 7N39 Agolnik, 7.62 M61, and certain Mosin or Dragonov rounds. There are only two vests in this class so far, and both of them are prized items if you can get a hold of them. 
The 6B436A armor is one of the most iconic pieces of equipment in Tarkov, and it can be acquired from level 3 mechanic for 3 bitcoins, or level 4 ragman for either 10 gold chains, 22 dog tags, or 3 damaged 6B43 vests. It also goes for around 300,000 rubles on the flea market. This armor protects both of your arms, chest, and your stomach with level 6 protection, but comes with the highest movement speed penalties in the game, a 40% flat speed reduction, 18% turning speed, and 27% ergonomic penalty. This vest can let you walk through a lot of gunfire, but if you leave yourself in the open, the mobility penalties are going to get you killed. The Zook 6A armor can be acquired from level 4 Ragman for 2 antique vases, making it actually one of the more cost effective armors in the game if you can pick these up in raid or for cheap on the flea market. It protects the chest and the stomach and has nice mobility stats for how strong the armor is. 13% movement speed reduction is not bad for this level of armor, and the turning speed and ergonomics penalties are both quite low. The only real disadvantage to this armor is the poor repair rate and the barter only purchase option. My pick for the best level 6 armor is easily the Zook 6A. While the 6B43 might make you a walking tank, the Zook has a nice balance of mobility and protection that makes it a really obvious choice in my opinion. A special class of armor in Escape from Tarkov is Armored Tactical Rigs, which either act like both armor and a rig or allow you to equip both at the same time and stack two layers of body armor. Most of these rigs are extremely pricey and are kind of considered endgame gear that is taken alongside other high tier equipment. The biggest advantage of these rigs is that they save your better armor from being prematurely damaged, but they also give you additional mobility reduction. The 6B516 armor is available at Ragman level 2 for about 53,000 rubles. This rig protects your chest and stomach with level 3 armor and takes up both your chest armor and tactical rig slots, which can sometimes make looting a bit tough. The cost is actually not bad for budget runs though, and the mobility stats are about average, making this a good choice when money is tight. The 6B515 armored rig is available at Ragman level 1 for a trade of 7 bars of soap and 3 rolls of toilet paper. It also takes up both your armor and rig slots. To be honest, I've never once seen this rig used by another player in hundreds of hours of gameplay since it was added, and I picked it up for the first time while making this video. A level 4 armor and rig is actually quite good, but the trade for the rig is weird and I don't see it getting used a lot. The ANA Tactical M1 Armored Rig is available from Ragman Level 3 for a trade of 4 Aquamari water bottles, which can easily be found on Shoreline. This rig gives you Level 3 armor for the chest and stomach, and has a really great slot layout with two 2x4 slots for drum mags. The mobility reduction is 10% to movement and 5% to turning speed and ergonomics. The ANA Tactical M2 Armored Rig is available at Level 3 Ragman for 3 visors and 4 R glasses, or from Level 4 Ragman for 10 dog tags. It offers Level 3 protection over the chest and stomach, and has slightly higher mobility stats than the M1 Rig. However, the rig layout only gives you 8 1x2 slots and 2 1x1 pockets. The 511 Tactech Plate Carrier is available from Level 2 Ragman for a trade of 4 Golden TT Pistols, or Level 3 Ragman for 2 GP5 Gas Masks and 3 Flaming Scab Masks. This rig gives you Level 4 protection over your chest only, and has good mobility stats. However, you can only fit 6 1x2 mags into the vest along with 6 1x1 pocket slots. The Wartech TV-110 plate carrier is sold by Ragman Level 3 for 156,000 rubles. It offers Level 3 protection over the chest, with a high durability of 60 and average mobility stats. This rig's big advantage is its layout, which features two 1x1 pockets, three 1x3 mag slots, and two 2x2 pouches, making it one of the most versatile rigs for looting and for taking big mags. In the armored rig category, I would say it's largely user preference, but if I'm putting my money into an armored rig, I'm buying the ANA M1 or the Wartech rig so I can fit drum mags and helmets into the rig slots. To wrap up the video, I want to give my editor's choice picks for the top body armors in Escape from Tarkov. First up is a tie between the press armor and the 6B23 for the best budget armor in the game. In the level 4 category, I think the Gazelle deserves a mention for having a great barter trade to acquire a solid level 4 armor. In the level 5 category, I think the Gen 4 Assault and 6B13 Killa armor take my top picks. The Killa is easily the best high mobility level 5 vest due to its stats, and the Gen 4 Assault gives you the best balance between coverage and mobility. Of the level 6 armors, in my opinion, it's hard to not just call the Zook 6A the best armor in the game straight up, or at the very least a direct tie with Killa's vest. In the armored rig category, I would say it's largely user preference, but if I'm putting my money into an armored rig, I'm buying the ANA M1 or the Wartech rig so I can fit drum mags and helmets into the rig slots. 
Thanks for checking out the video and I hope you found it helpful. Feel free to leave any suggestions, corrections, or comments down below, and stay tuned to the channel for more videos like this on Escape from Tarkov. I think the next videos I want to do are an ammo guide similar to this, and a mobility focused loadout guide to compete with hatchlings. I stream raids fairly frequently at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, so come stop by sometime and I'll leave a link for that in the description. So until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City. To the right. Oh! Shout eh? <laughs> Did that get us both? Uh, it got me. It got me too.